All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to model up a custom countertop over top of the existing cabinets that we have. So inside Revit, you have uh, some countertops that you could probably use. So like underneath casework, you have um, a file folder that should have like all the base cabinets that you use to build the kitchen up. You got shelving, tall cabinets, wall cabinets, but there's also a file folder for countertops. And if you were to look through the countertops that exist, all right, you have like just some basic or generic countertops that you can use in certain cir uh, circumstances. So like here you have one where it's really just like a straight line kitchen and then they give you a spot for a sink to go into. Here they did, you know, it's really the same countertop with a sink already in it. Here's the same countertop without a sinkhole. They give you one for an island with a sinkhole in it. They give you one for an island without a sinkhole in it. L shape with a backsplash and a 45. Uh, same thing with a sinkhole. Same thing without a 45. Same thing with a sink put into it. Uh, here's like an L shape with no sinkhole. And then these ones are really handy like just for bathrooms. So if you were going to use like a vanity uh, cabinet and you were going to put like a, a elliptical sink, all right, or a round sink, you could just kind of use one of those. So there's some pre-made ones that are in there, but none of these match up with the same exact form uh, that we really need like for our countertop in the kitchen. All right, so that's where you kind of have to break away from using some of the pre-built objects or some of the pre-built components, all right, that you would otherwise just load or place into the file, all right, and we're going to actually switch over to a thing called model in place uh, family building, all right, so this is where you're going to build your own custom components for uh, your for your projects, okay. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll like delete that one countertop that's in place. This probably looks a lot closer to what you folks have um, available up and open on your screen. I'm just going to hide some of this other stuff just so we don't see it so it's a little less confusing as we look here. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our uh, model in place component tools. So that's just found if I click on the little down arrow underneath component, we'll click on model in place. and. The first thing the computer wants to know is like what family is this a part of? Okay, so really you could just leave this completely alone, but by default it's on columns. We're making a countertop, and a countertop is probably not something that should be categorized as a column. All right, so really I should look for something that better suits or uh, matches up with what this is going to be. So typically uh, any cabinets, countertops, um, uh, wall cabinets, uh, standing cabinets are all going to be casework. So we'll just use the casework category there. Then they want you to name what it's going to be. So we can call it kitchen countertop or just countertop just to be descriptive. And as soon as you do that, you're now in like family edit or family build mode. Okay, so your toolbar totally changed over. Now you're basically just creating any of these forms that exist, all right, these are all solid forms, like where you see like these uh, blue features. And then we also have this thing called void form. Void form is just going to like subtract or cut material away from something that we model, all right. But basically, like you can model your own custom families now right inside your model, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we're just going to use this extrusion tool to create a solid extrusion. That's going to ultimately build the countertop or uh, a piece of geometry that's going to represent a countertop. And the way it works, you just develop a sketch, something that matches up with the profile for the uh, extrusion you want to create. And then you're just giving that sketch or you're giving that profile some thickness. Okay, so this is really no different from anything that you've done, like when you were building a floor or something to that effect. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to click on extrusion. And now I'm basically like drawing lines. Now by default, Revit has you drawing lines on the level that you're, you're working on. So right now it's saying I'm on uh, actually level BO footing. So that's not entirely right. I think we're going to just go ahead and backtrack here really quick. Let's go over to our first floor plans and basically just do the same thing. So we'll go over to uh, the extrusion tool. Now I'm on first floor floor plans. And if you look here, we're actually drawing this right on the first floor level, all right, and that's a much better place to start drawing. All right, we're also looking at our, our uh, sketch straight down from the top, so wherever we draw lines, we know the lines are going to exist uh, perfectly, okay, so that's really where we kind of want to be. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace out 
the path or uh, the location for where that countertop is going to go. So probably the easiest place to do that is to just kind of start up against the back wall. I'm going to start like right on the fridge. And I'm just going to trace right along the back wall here up until that uh, back corner. And if we switch over to like that thin line mode, it makes it a little bit easier to define like where those boundaries are going to be. So we'll just kind of trace right along the back wall. Do the same exact thing all the way down like this back side. We'll go right down here up until I get to the range. All right. And then we'll just kind of define like one line right along the side of the range. You can do the same thing on the other side over here. Just kind of pull that right out up against the refrigerator. All right. So we have one line that goes all the way across the back. We have two lines that define like where the countertop is going to terminate right here. Okay. And then the one thing that I want to do is I want to put some kind of boundary where the countertop is going to stop on the front face. But the, the reality is like we don't necessarily want that line to stop at exactly the same place where the cabinets uh, terminate. So we actually want to have like a little bit of an overhang or a little bit of a lip all right, on the front face of uh, the cabinets. So, you, so if, like, you know, you spill something, you spill some water or something like that on the countertop, all right, it doesn't just, like, run straight down the front face of the cabinets. So you do want to have a little bit of an overhang there. So probably the easiest way to put a consistent overhang in is to use your pick lines tool, all right, and then to just put in an offset value. So if we were going to have, like, a, uh, an offset value for, you know, the lip on the countertop of maybe an inch, you can just key in the value of one inch. All right, and then basically you can just kind of go right around and you can pick the front face or the front edge of your countertops. Now I'm having trouble picking like that 45, so maybe we'll just kind of skip that. And it's not picking up on the 45. I don't know why. Um, I'm also having trouble fitting this dishwasher in there, so we're going to go back and we'll fix the dishwasher. All right, but for right now, Let's see, we'll put that inch overhang in one more time. And let's try to just kind of trace the line instead over here. Do the same thing on this side. All right, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my sketch. So if I use my trim tool, we can just go ahead and we can make sure that there's a 90 degree angle between like all these lines that are supposed to be perpendicular to each other. We can also put an angle or put a corner between these lines that aren't touching yet. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm picking two sides of the lines that I want to keep. So I want to keep this side and I want to keep that side. So it's going to turn that into a perfect uh, corner over here. Again, like we don't want to pick these back sides. That's just going to kind of you know, make a little bit of a mess there. So we want to keep this, pick the sides of the lines we want to keep with the trim tool. All right, we'll do that over here. I want to keep this side and I want to keep this side. All right, and if you look at that, that is the sketch that you're going to need to define your countertop. All right. So we're just kind of drawing out where that thing's going to go uh, in plan view. All right. Making sure that these corners meet up. There can't be any holes. There can't be any intersects. They have to come to, they have to, come to a perfect corner. Okay. The last thing that I want to do is give myself like a little bit of a sinkhole or an opening here. That's actually kind of easy. You can just stick with a rectangle. All right. And you don't have to put in like the curve. So you don't have to put in an opening with a curve on it. You can usually with a sink kind of just find like this uh, rectangular corner here where that's going to exist. And you can go ahead and you can just place that in there. Okay. And if I hit the little green check mark and finish that and we bounce back to 3D you should see something that's created, all right, that's ultimately going to represent your countertop. Really, the only problem is the extrusion, all right, or the countertop itself starts at zero feet, zero inches on that first floor level, and it extrudes one foot. So right now, it's like on the floor, it's one foot thick, and it's going up through all of your cabinets. So it's just kind of like located uh, on the z-axis, kind of in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this like true front view here. All right. And I'm going to take the little blue grip on the top of the countertop. I'm just going to pull that all the way up. 
We're going to go right underneath the sink. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab that blue grip on the bottom. I'm going to pull that up. And we're going to sit that right on top of your cabinets. And if you look at things in 3D at that point, it looks a lot better now. All right, like once you get that countertop up off the ground. And you can still come back after the fact and you can move like some grips around if things aren't in the right spot. You could also pick the extrusion and you can always go back in and edit it. So if it's not in the place where you exactly wanted it, you can always go back and change things. Like one little, one little tweak might be just to make the sinkhole just a little bit bigger, all right, just so that uh, it's like under the flange of the sink, but at the same time, it's a little bit bigger than the sinkhole just so that you don't get like two surfaces in Revit that are intersecting or existing in the same place. That just kind of cleans it up and makes it look a little bit better, all right? And then one other thing you can do, your countertop is going to be made out of like really just like this gray generic material. It's not made out of anything. So if you want to change the material, now would be a great time to do it. You can pick your countertop over in the properties tools. You should have a material. You can go in here and you can change the material over to just about anything you want. All right, so if I was going to do like a concrete countertop or um, uh, granite, all right, something like that, you can load one of those materials into your project and you can use one of those for your countertop material all right and then when you're a hundred percent done with the model you're going to click the little green check mark to finish it so that's maybe one thing that's just a little bit confusing about countertops is they are in this in place family mode all right so if you were going to edit it or you were going to change it in some capacity now that you're kind of like done and you're finished with everything you have to pick the countertop hit edit in place family mode then pick the countertop again and now you can like edit the extrusion you can change it you can modify it you can change the material when you're finished with it, um, you gotta kind of hit the green check mark two times. All right, so hit two times to get out of there. Um, if, lastly, we wanted to add like maybe a backsplash or something here, all right, once again, like you can just pick the countertop, hit edit in place family mode. We can actually make like a secondary extrusion or another extrusion that could act as a backsplash. So if I were to hit my extrusion tool button, go back to that first floor, uh, floor plan view do the same thing here just kind of to add a backsplash so I'll just kind of trace along the back wall go right along here and this time let's say we put in like maybe a three-quarter inch backsplash so we'll go 0 0.75 try that one more time creating like a little sketch that's going to define the base for the backsplash. Trim this up so it's nice and clean. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So now I have a sketch that defines like where the backsplash is going to go. Um, let's raise up the extrusion just to start with. Let's make that go up like four feet just so I can see it. Put the little green check mark. We'll go back to 3D really quick. And oh, it's all the way down here. Wow. All right, this one I think should probably go up about four inches over top of the countertop. We just deleted it on accident. Let's not go up as high. There we go. So we'll put that right on top of the countertop and let's see if we can get it to go. So that goes, it's 13 feet three inches. We'll make it go 13 feet seven inches. The difference between 13 seven and 13 three is four inches. That gives us like a four inch tall backsplash. So that's like, you know pretty adequate or appropriately sized backsplash. Then we can just match the same material property that we had for, uh, for the counter material. All right, and that is how you put in a custom countertop in Revit.